So a guy walks into a hospital, mental health hospital, and demands the release of a young man, Mr. Kwan. He threatens the nurses and staff. He tells them that if they don't release him, that he will arrest them for obstruction. He is a sheriff and a SWAT and a this and a that. He's all the law enforcement uh, identities that he needed to say he was for them to release Mr. Kwan. And he's released. And just on a note, Mr. Kwan was um, admitted two days prior on a 5150 hold because he has a very serious case of bipolar disorder. So Mr. Kwan is released from the hospital under duress and threats and all the above. Um, and this man then tells Mr. Kwan luxury cars he always is talking about. He's going to he's going to come and get one. He's going to one of the ones that's in his name. He won't. Mr. Kwan agrees, and a couple of days later, the man shows up at his home, which is not really his home, it's his parents' home, and proceeds to take a luxury car from the residence and procures it. This man that is busting people out of hospitals, taking cars, he's a bail bondsman. And he has a very unique, hopefully, way of um, collecting money due to him. Apparently, he's letting these people, he's getting them out of jail without payment so in turn he has the excuse or reason to do so to go and <laughs> forfeiture their property based on the money owed the man i'm talking about is former torrance police officer rahan nazir this was one of the most in my opinion <laughs> serious or <laughs> out outrageous things he did to you know get money and it didn't stop there at that one luxury car he noticed a ferrari in the in the garage of the home his parents home and came back for that car not but within a couple months he arrived and was met by mr and mrs kwan the younger kwan's parents they lived in a nice home in rolling hills estates california and they were not so willing to give up the ferrari and they called the sheriff or that's who covers that area. The sheriff arrives. Some willy-nilly paperwork that Mr. Nazir had just kind of finagled together was enough for deputy to accept, and he presented this piece of paper, receipt, or whatever it was, a document stating that um, their son had used it as a, as you know, for payment or something like that. So he was doing a lawful forfeiture, which was BS, and he got that car, and then he comes back again for some reason. And when he comes back, the Kwans hear him knocking, but they don't answer. And they're watching him from, like, an upstairs bedroom. And they see him cutting the screen of the master, like, bedroom sliding door to enter the home. And he comes in, he goes inside. So they call the sheriff. And the sheriff comes back. He's explaining and, and claiming to be law enforcement, this, that, and the other. The, the, he has every right. He's got paperwork. And at that point, finally, he was kind of stopped in that situation from continuing. But the damage was done. Unfortunately, I don't have the uh, outcome of that story. If ever in the future I do come upon that information, I, I promise I will share it with you. But that the information regarding the Kwans uh, kind of stops there. So that wasn't his first uh, forfeiture of property. There was another occasion he went to a client's house in Lakewood. She looking for her Toyota or something like that, and she said it's in Long Beach. She took him to the location, thinking it was a lot lawful, legit forfeiture. You know, she she gave him the car, but it wasn't. It wasn't a legitimate forfeiture, and she realized it within like the following weeks, and she was pissed. She was creative too, because she decided to make posters that were like wanted posters, and she taped them up all in, outside of the uh, bail bondsman office. And in turn, he tried to file a report on her. Oh, first he called her, threatened her life, and then followed through with like attempting to do a restraining order. The court documents don't really explain the outcome of that incident. On another occasion, Mr. Nazir, as a bail bondsman, showed up at a McDonald's in Hermosa and approached his client and demanded money so he hands over his girlfriend handed him like four hundred dollars or something but he was handcuffed at this mcdonald's and taken to his office and the girlfriend was told to go get more money so he takes 
the boyfriend, his client, to the office. The girlfriend goes and gets more money and brings it. And he says, um, okay, I'll let him go for now. But he shows up at his house. But again, this isn't his house. The house ends up being his mother's house. He demands to be let inside. She refuses. He busts in, makes her get on her knees, and, you know, threatens her. The court documents ends there with this incident as well. He was first on the radar back in 2007 when he shot three unarmed citizens. One incident, the victim didn't die, thankfully. They were paid in a settlement. The second and third shooting were of two burglary suspects who both hid in a shed. Mr. Nazir and his partner, you know, shot into the shed. I think they said there was like 30 plus shots into the shed and those two individuals died and they ended up being unarmed. He was fired, but not for those shootings. No, he was fired because of paperwork, because he did not disclose an informant that was used during an arrest. So the prosecutors did some investigating and noticed a lot of things in the report that weren't either there or were untrue. So they put him on a Brady's list. So any cases he brought would have been automatically dismissed. So he was a liability to Torrance Police and they fired him. He fought for that job back for like five years. The taxpayers paying, I don't know, upwards of uh, almost a million dollars in legal. And, And ultimately he lost. So he never got his job back. And the tyranny of that job ended. But his tyranny overall did not. Because he decided to become a bail bondsman. And his tyranny continued. So it's just kind of, I don't know, it doesn't really surprise me because, I mean, the egos and the the life that these, especially Torrance cops, I mean, if you need to know, I could enlighten you in some future video, but it wouldn't take long in a quick Google search of Torrance California's police department that you would find out the depravities and this is the horrible environment that these, uh, these cops create for themselves um, and take part in. Just this year, finally, the case was closed, I think in May of 2023, and he got 27 years, which, good. This is, what I had mentioned earlier, is just a little portion of the hell that he created for so many people's lives. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd share that little story time with you. Till next time, happy holidays, and a happy new year to all of you.